Hey folks, Andrew Packer here and welcome to Trading Tips. Now there are a lot of different ways to invest in the market and as the market sort of grinds along to these new all-time highs, one of the strategies that I like to do is to look at things that haven't gone along for the ride. There are a lot of individual stocks and even some sectors that just have not performed as well and have not been part of that club that's, that's hitting the new all-time highs, that's getting people all excited and riled up. And that's more interesting to me because something that is out of favor with the market will tend to eventually come back into favor. And things that are currently in favor in the market tend to come out of favor. So when the market's really high about one stock or sector, there's a sign, there might be a sign that, that it's too high and it's, it's going to pull back. A uh, classic example of this is the internet tech stocks early 2000s. People were just putting money into these companies in droves uh, simply on the idea that someone else would come along and keep bidding the stocks up higher because they'd been moving higher. These momentum trades essentially work until no one has any money left that they want to invest in them and then they end up going bust. But a lot of times you'll find sectors that have just been out of favor for months, years, even a decade or more where it's reached a point and everyone says it's a dead trade. And much like Newsweek magazine in 1979 had an article called The Death of Equities where they were talking about how no one wanted to invest in stocks anymore, uh, it might be a sign of a generational opportunity in the making. So looking at some of the contrarian trades today, there's one that uh, looks pretty interesting and it's probably going to be a little controversial because it looks so ugly right now. We're talking about natural gas. So what's the problem with natural gas? Uh, the problem is actually that we're swimming in this stuff. About 15 years ago, some of the first fracking technologies came along and allowed people to start drilling holes in profitable gas wells in locations that would have been prohibitively difficult before and reached little pockets of uh, existing and, and previously used uh, oil and natural gas wells that you know, had already been considered empty and worthless. But now we can get to it you know, more cheaply. We can get to these smaller pockets and it can still be profitable. So now all of a sudden we have a huge production problem. And of course, what happens uh, when you have a commodity and you have supply and demand and supply suddenly goes up. Well, if demand's not going up, you know, the prices kind of have to go down to, to adjust for that. So looking at the natural gas space, since just December of last year, prices have come down by 50%. That's a pretty big drop. And we like to kind of look at any asset that's lost half its value in the space of a year as, as a valuation play. Now, of course, there are some reasons for that. Natural gas is a very seasonal commodity. And right now in the dog days of summer, people really aren't using natural gas as much because it's primarily used for heating. So the winter months are really where the prices start going up. But that also means you want to maybe buy now while things are kind of out of favor and before it starts moving up. Because once a commodity like natural gas starts to move up uh, on a short term cyclical basis like it will you know, in the winter months, uh, you're going to kind of miss out on the profit opportunity because by the time people start talking about it and get excited about it, it's already started to make that move higher. Now, looking at a more broader trend, since 2009, so for the past 10 years now, Natural gas is one of the few commodities that's actually declined in value. Pretty much everything else has gone up. Gold's gone up, oil's gone up, iron ore's gone up. Uh, many of the agricultural commodities, while you know, they kind of look a little bearish, uh, they've gone up as well in the past 10 years. So when you have something that's been out of favor over a one year period and a 10 year period, uh, your contrarian senses should be focusing in on that and looking at the details on that a bit more. Right now, natural gas prices have gotten down to about uh, $2.10 per million British thermal units. Uh, MBTU is sort of the, the preferred pricing on that. Uh, it's just a function of, of the amount of energy in you know, this contained volume of natural gas. Uh, and frankly, that's, that's too low. It's reaching a level where production is going to be coming down and where demand looks pretty good. Natural gas gets a lot of demand as supplementary power generation. It's cleaner burning than coal. Uh, it's doing uh, more to put you know, coal, coal jobs out of business than you know, just the coal industry itself is because it's cleaner burning. It's also got enough density and volume in it that it can be used uh, to power things like trucks or buses. So you actually have some places where people are building fleets of natural natural gas powered vehicles. We also have a new technology that we also didn't have, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and that's the ability to create liquefied natural gas or LNG. By liquefying it, we can now ship natural gas internationally. Before, uh, usually natural gas, you would have to drill it up, it would go into a pipeline and it would get shipped uh, somewhere else where it would get used. And then once you hit sort of, uh, you know, the border, 
you, you couldn't really ship it anywhere else outside of you know the same land mass essentially. So now we have the ability to to liquefy it profitably and sell it overseas, and that's helped bring the world price of natural gas down as well, which is much higher than the rest of the world. Uh, obviously, not all the way because of things like shipping costs, but the contrarian opportunity looks very attractive here. We've got something that's been hugely oversold. Uh, you know, again, it's not just the recent price down 50%; it's down 26% year to date. On top of that, we're in the summer months where things look ugly. So, looking forward, which is what we should be doing as investors, you know, we've got a lot of you know tailwinds here. We can keep exporting natural gas, uh, which will help with the trade deficit and some other problems like that. Prices are going to go up in the winter as we get into the colder months. Even if we have a mild winter, there's still going to be higher demand than there is now. And of course, a lot of the folks that are pumping out natural gas right now are doing so because they've got to make those cash flow payments uh, to lenders. Uh, and it's a very over leveraged space. And I think we're going to start seeing some bankruptcies in the space with some of these uh, natural gas drillers that got a little over enthusiastic. And that will also help bring production levels down as well. So looking at natural gas, there are a few different ways to trade it. Uh, over the next few months, I would just look at an unleveraged trade. And there's a fund out there, ticker F. CG. This is the first trust natural gas fund. Uh, it's just a way to trade natural gas prices. Uh, I would also look at some of the just pipeline and shipping and storage companies because they're the ones who are really benefiting from this trend right now uh, of just, just this abundance of production that we have in the natural gas space. Uh, a lot of those companies are structured as MLPs, which can create some, some tax problems for, for some folks, or at least extra paperwork and extra headaches. Uh, but there is a company, Targa Resources, TRG. P gives you about a 9% yield to play the natural gas, uh, oil, and storage uh, space right now. And uh, it's a C-Corp, so you don't have that extra tax paperwork that goes into it. So there are a lot of different ways to play this opportunity. There are even leveraged funds, which if you're more of a trader and the price starts going up, uh, you can do a double ETF. So if uh, natural gas prices go up 10%, it'll go up 20%. You can even do a triple ETF, uh, which will turn your 10% you know, move higher into a 30% move higher. Uh, so there are a lot of ways to play this space. And you look at all of them right now. They look ugly. They look beaten down. They look like they're going to zero. And in the contrarian world, when something you know, is already getting priced in like it's going to zero, uh, that's usually when it, it looks like things are you know, actually going to start to turn around and look, look attractive here. So that'll wrap things up for this edition of Trading Tips. Until next time, I'm Andrew Packer wishing you good trading and good financial health.